Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to tell you today about DGX Saturn V. Uh, this is the deep learning supercomputer we built uh, internally at NVIDIA. Uh, we use it uh, for our production work and uh, we also do a lot of research. So uh, I want to share today some of the learnings uh, that we've gotten over the, the last year and how we plan to use it going forward. So this is a, a moonshot for us. Um, it enables our teams, it enables us to, to help the community um, to do what's very important work for all of us. We started this cluster a year ago with 125 nodes of DGX1 Pascal. Uh, since then we've upgraded the Pascal nodes to Volta and we're now building it out to a total of 660 uh, DGX1 servers uh, by the end of the year. Um, this is a phenomenal resource for us in the community. Over 5,000 GPUs, uh, 40 petaflops of uh, FP64 for those of you doing HPC. Uh, but because we've got Volta GPUs in here and we've optimized our deep learning uh, framework containers uh, for the tensor cores that run FP16 multiplies with 32-bit uh, accumulate, uh, we can bring to bear 660 petaflops uh, to AI uh, and deep learning performance. And the power efficiency is extremely good. It's 15 gigaflops per watt at uh, double precision. Uh, and of course, even uh, better than that for deep learning. One of the things this lets us do is what we call hero runs. In everyday use, the, the system is run under a scheduler where uh, over 100 users uh, queue jobs to it that might be single GPU, eight GPU, multi-node. Uh, but from time to time, we have a big project where we suddenly want to run on 50 nodes or 100 nodes, or in the future, 300 or 400. And the ability to bring the whole of Saturn V to bear on a single task um, <coughs> Uh, brings quite a lot of benefits and typically we can turn around a job that would previously take months uh, in the matter of a couple of days. So when you're running deep learning at scale, uh, there, there are a number of challenges to the software um, and we, we will let the software challenges drive our use cases which drive our architecture. Currently in deep learning there are multiple very popular frameworks including TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cafe2, Tiano, the, the list goes on and on. Each of those frameworks tends to be built at different times on different versions of CUDA, on different libraries, they rely on different environmental variables, uh, and different versions of Python. So to, to get around this, we've, um, we've gone to a, a containerized uh, application architecture to provide isolation between jobs. And the same issues affect HPC and other accelerated applications, and we're finding containerization to be a, a good solution. It lets multiple jobs from different users coexist uh, on the same server, and we keep the server installed to a minimum. So given that we've gone with uh, deep learning containers, uh, we've committed a team to optimize them, test them, upgrade them, and we release new versions uh, every month. A big part of the work that goes into that is multi-GPU optimizations. When we're running multi-GPU on a single deep learning training job, there's a lot of data to be exchanged between the, deep, the GPUs, uh, between each pass. Uh, we have high performance uh, NVLink, 150 gigabytes per second in and out of each GPU. And Nickel, the NVIDIA CUDA Collectives Library, uh, operates the all reduce uh, that's part of each framework. We also provide a CUDA toolkit container, so if you're not doing deep learning and you want to build your own application, uh, that can be containerized and run on this system as well. When you do a containerized architecture, that you need a way of distributing the, the containers to your users, uh, and we've established the NVIDIA GPU Cloud Registry to do this. Uh, initially, this was an internal resource. Then we opened it up to DGX1 and DGX station users. Uh, and now it's available to uh, all users uh, on Pascal and Volta uh, GPUs. 
Within that registry, we have a deep learning section with all the frameworks I described. Uh, we now have an HPC uh, area with, with multiple containerized applications there and an HPC visualization area. A lot of people running HPC want to visualize their simula uh, simulations as they go. We support this with NVIDIA Docker 2. Uh, and then you can connect OpenGL visualization to a live running container. And a single NGC account, which is free to sign up for, gets you access to all of this software at no charge. When we're running this internally, we've got 125 nodes today growing to over 600. We run every job on Saturn V in a Docker container using NVIDIA Docker. And our individual users uh, connect to it through a cloud interface. We provide REST API, a CLI, and a web UI to allow our users to upload their data sets, define the jobs they want to run, uh, launch that job. If there's idle capacity, that job will start executing uh, in less than a minute. Um, if, the, if the system is oversubscribed, the job goes into a queue uh, and our scheduler matches the resources for that job uh, and launches it when the resources become available. We also have telemetry so that you can see how busy the GPUs are in the jobs you're running, which is useful if you're profiling. Uh, and we have an SDK for application telemetry. So now I want to go over a few use cases that have been enabled uh, on Saturn V. Uh, one of them uh, got shown at a trade show recently. It's super real-time uh, simulation for automotive. We're working uh, with the rest of the world on, on self-driving car technology. And when you're training networks uh, for cars, you're doing object detection, object classification. You're identifying clear space. Um, and the networks to do all of that need a lot of uh, input data uh, from cars. So every week we get new videos from cars that we use to, to label and then retrain our networks. Now once we retrain the network, it's better at the new use cases that it saw from the new data, but we need to know that it didn't degrade anything that was working before. So then we have to take 10,000 hours of pre-recorded video and run it through inference. Well, when we do that re-simulation, we can run it on Saturn V at super real time. And, and we've measured with 10,000 hours of recorded uh, video, we can process that on eight DGX1s in just five hours. And when we don't have five hours, we give that job 100 DGX1s and it finishes in less than 30 minutes. So there's a lot that you can do with scale uh, as a trade-off against time. Another use case that's interesting is optimizing for games. You know, we have several um, uh, gaming cloud products like uh, GeForce Now, uh, and it generates a wealth of data of how users are using games, what kind of performance they're getting, what kind of settings they're using. And we use deep learning to operate on that data and discover new optimizations that we can then roll out to the users to, to give them a better experience. Another area is in talent acquisition. Right? We process thousands and thousands of, of resumes every year, and we've trained a deep neural network um, to be able to predict based on the text in a resume uh, who's likely to get a phone screen, who's likely to get an interview, who's likely to get an offer, who, if they accept an offer, is likely still to be working for us in two years' time. Currently running in a, in a shadow form, but uh, very powerful. Now, I mentioned that we have hundreds of nodes uh, under management in Saturn V. And part of the reason we built it out at scale is to run multi-node jobs. So all of our DGX1s on Saturn V are connected out through 400 gigabit uh, InfiniBand NICs uh, and out through InfiniBand switches uh, to allow interconnection of nodes uh, for scale-out training. Remember that e each Volta GPU has the capability of, of sourcing and syncing 150 gigabytes a second of data. So we can do extremely fast uh, training within a node. When we want to go out beyond that node, you, you, you want to be able to go out as fast as possible. 
Uh, hence, we provisioned uh, four InfiniBand NICs um, per node. Uh, and then as you go out at scale, you have to go out through a, a series of, of switches, uh, a, a leaf and a spine. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about how we set that up uh, on Saturn V. So first of all, if you're putting together a small cluster, say up to 12 DGX1 nodes, you can certainly provision a switch, um, a couple of 36 port uh, switches um, to give you uh, a very good interconnectivity uh, on that small cluster. You'll have um, a full bisection bandwidth on each group of six uh, and a two to one over subscription uh, going between. And so we have a topology aware scheduler so that when we want to launch a multi-node job, uh, we can ensure that the, uh, the, the, the tasks within that job uh, go to nodes that have the, the best connectivity. When you're building out a medium cluster, this is what we call a pod in Saturn V. Uh, this is a pod of uh, 36 DGX1 nodes. Uh, we build it out with a 216 port director switch. Uh, believe it or not, that gives us full bisection bandwidth between every DGX1 pair uh, in that 36 uh, node cluster. Uh, and then we have 72 links that we can take out uh, to connect multiple pods together. So once again, we have this pattern of full bandwidth within the pod uh, and two to one over subscription if we go beyond the pod. Then you keep building out uh, like this uh, in multiple pods. Uh, put in a, a larger direct uh, top-level switch, uh, and the, the pattern continues. Um, maximum bandwidth, uh, minimum latency uh, within the pod, but still very good connectivity, very high bandwidth between pods uh, if you have to scale out that far. So th this is what a, a deep learning data center looks like uh, in the aggregate. Um, in the middle there, or sort of the left of the diagram, uh, you see the, uh, the InfiniBand scale-out connectivity uh, up to that large uh, director switch. Uh, this is showing uh, uh, 144 nodes here. Um, we're connecting out to our storage on Ethernet. Um, that's our recommendation. If you want to do uh, scale-out training or scale-out HPC, uh, keep the InfiniBands uh, for uh, the uh, data exchange between GPUs uh, on different nodes. However, if you don't have that high bandwidth need uh, between the nodes, you can certainly use InfiniBand for storage as well. Uh, that's a supported use case. So, <coughs> in working with this, um, this supercomputer, this uh, large cluster of DGX1s, uh, and it's very much with a focus on deep learning, but running HPC workloads as well. Um, we have had a, a few aha moments of, you know, what is the same and what's different? Uh, and, you know, as we grow out uh, Saturn V, what will we do differently and, and why? Um, certainly, um, HPC expertise in building out a data center is highly relevant to building out uh, an AI data center. Uh, but there are places where the, the similarities are, are limited. Uh, one of them really, frankly, is in rack design um, and how much power to provision put to the rack and how dense you want to go. Um, it, it's very important that you don't assume a lot of headroom um, in between uh, peak power and, um, and your daily operating power. Um, we find that when people are running deep learning training, uh, across all eight GPUs in a node, um, they can rapidly go to max power, right? The, the tensor cores in Volta uh, that allow that extremely dense FP16 uh, matrix uh, multiplier comp computation uh, will take you to using all of your power. So as you're, as you're planning out your rack design, you know, don't count on your, uh, your systems uh, all running um, uh, below limit. Uh, having said that, it's well worth uh, packing your systems in if you can provision the, the power to the rack uh, because the shorter your InfiniBand cables, the, the less you spend on cabling um, and the, the, uh, the more you've got left for other things. Uh, proper airflow is crucial to cluster performance, right? Uh, a lot of data centers can keep up with um, uh, a peak workload uh, but will lag when that peak work workload starts up. 
right? So uh, GPUs start up very, very fast on deep learning uh, and can rapidly go from, from idle to max. Right. If, if your air coming in heats up during that time, then, then we have to throttle the workload back until your cooling catches up. So it's very important to have the, the proper airflow. I already talked quite a bit about networking. Uh, InfiniBand is, is absolutely recommended for the internode connections, uh, and we provision four NICs uh, per, per DGX1 for that. Uh, purpose. Uh, when you use InfiniBand for this, you get very high bandwidth, very low latency, uh, there are no collisions, and if you provision uh, for full bisection bandwidth, um, it's very predictable throughput. Um, storage uh, is interesting. With deep learning, a lot of the storage load is at the startup of the training. But if you're starting up lots of uh, DGX1s, um, all doing training uh, from the same uh, server, um, then you, you may have a bit of a, a cold uh, start issue. Uh, you can stagger the starts or you can replicate your data across storage servers. Um, once you get going, the DGX1 read cache uh, is absolutely critical to performance. Uh, we've got seven terabytes of SSD in there that are configured as a file system cache so that once you're through that cold start, uh, the system runs uh, absolutely at full performance. Remember, your data sets can be between you know, tens of thousands to, to over a million objects uh, in a single run. So we, we have to think through these things. I already mentioned that the GPU data center can run near maximum power. Um, so you have to assume the, uh, the watts per rack of the, of the ranking. Um, but remember, when you're packing that power into a single rack, you're building far fewer racks, probably by a factor of 10 or 20. So you take up a lot less space in the data center uh, for very high throughput and for very high uh, flops per watt. And lastly on software, um, containerization is the way that we've standardized within NVIDIA. Um, if you're doing deep learning at scale, uh, we recommend it. Uh, that's why we've put up the NVIDIA GPU cloud registry at ngc.nvidia.com. So those same containers that, that we use internally for our deep learning training uh, are available to you and they're updated uh, every month with new uh, optimizations and features. The Nickel uh, multi-GPU um, uh, scale-out software is built into those containers. So if you're running the containerized software that's provided, uh, there's no extra step to go there. Uh, and Nickel automatically does the topology uh, detection uh, to set up the rings for the, for the reductions.